Hello, so this is the start of my survive the night vlog and I thought I was going to have to wait until tomorrow because that's when the book is actually released and my husband pre-ordered me the book for my birthday which was so so sweet of him and I was so pumped but I woke up this morning and looked on my net galley and I saw that I was actually approved today so it's on my kindle so I'm going to start reading the arc today actually tonight it's almost midnight tonight and hopefully I can read some I'm really really tired because we're still in that in-between process of moving but hopefully I'll be able to read some of it tonight and really get to enjoy it and my hope is that I can finish it tomorrow and then put up a review of it very soon so I will be updating you as I read and I am so pumped this is my most anticipated release of the whole year I have my bunny right here lying next to me. I don't know if you can see him down here, but he's very, very sweet. And I am ready to start reading. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm here for a little update. So last night I got about 23% into the arc that I received for Survive the Night and I have some updates. So first of all, before I get into that though, I am so excited because my physical copy just showed up in the mail. I am so freaking excited. Here it is. It's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And I love how Taylor Adams actually has a little blurb on the back because Hello, I love No Exit so, so much. Um, and this actually kind of gives me a little bit of No Exit vibes. Not really, but at surface value, it's about somebody kind of in a claustrophobic setting and it involves a road trip. But anyway, my thoughts so far in the novel. First of all, this is a little bit different than what I thought it would be. So she's get, she gets in the car with this guy and she's a little sketched out, but a little bit of a spoiler. Not too spoilery though, because it's kind of talked about pretty soon into the novel, but she kind of sees these pictures in these films and it's sort of like a hallucination, but she likes calling it seeing movies. And so it makes her a little bit of an unreliable narrator. And so I wasn't expecting that, but I'm really excited that an unreliable narrator is being used because it's really building the tension and you're kind of not sure if she's just imagining things or if they're really happening so I really like that aspect of it so far. I also love all the references to old films. Charlie the main character is a film major and so she's obsessed with movies and they've helped her get through a lot in her life. She's dealt with a lot of grief and so films are talked about as well and I love that because I know Riley Sager is a film buff and he loves old films and also just films in general so I'm really loving that and I cannot wait to read more. Oh, this is just so fun. It's a perfect summer read. I would highly recommend this for anybody in the summer. I know technically it's taking place in the colder months in November, but it's working for me in the summer. It's a bit of a rainy day. I went to a used bookstore with my younger brother and my husband and it was really fun. None of us actually bought anything because we're in the process of moving and I just had to practice self-control. <laughs> because I have so many books that I need to get through on my shelf already, but I'm thinking I will go to Half Price Books soon and I will most likely buy some things there. So I'm gonna keep reading and I'm so excited to give you updates. We also had a nice lunch at Noodles, which was really fun. I've really missed Noodles and Company. It's a Midwest thing, at least to my knowledge, it's not in Texas. And yeah, it's just been really fun. I'm like out of breath because I'm so excited and it is hot in this house like <laughs> it is so warm it is so humid up here 
So that's going to be a little bit of an adjustment because in Waco, Texas, it was definitely more dry heat, whereas now with all the rain and everything, it is quite humid. So that is my update. Okay, so I just got to the first chapter from the perspective of the man who's driving the car. And let me say, the stakes are getting higher. Oh my gosh, Riley Saker is a master at writing suspense, I swear. I love his writing so much. My heart was pounding in a scene in a rest stop and I'm trying not to give away too much. I will put some spoilery thoughts at the very end and I'm also going to be doing actually a separate review on my channel of this book. But anyway, I've been participating on Deja's reading sprint. She has Rain, which has been really fun. Rain from Bruce and Binds. And I've been having fun watching their reading sprints and reading along. And yeah, I'm having a blast reading this Riley Sager book. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm trying to decide where this will go in my ranking. And I have a feeling I know. I think this will be my third favorite book of his under Home Before Dark and Lock Every Door. But... Now it's getting more tense and I'm thinking it has a potential to be ranked higher and again I've never ranked any of his books below four stars which is a really good rating for me. Okay, so I just popped into Lush really quick, and if you all don't know, I haven't had a bathtub at my house for ever, basically, and it's so sad because I love taking baths, especially with Lush bath bombs. And so, I picked up some bath bombs because my parents have a bath, which is very exciting, so I'm planning to read. So I got this one that is called, I think it's called Dragon's Egg. Jeez, I'm trying to balance this. I can't balance it right now, but it looks really cute and it smells like grapefruit. I'll show you all better in a clip. And then I got one that smells like vanilla and it's one of their cheaper ones. And then I got big shampoo because honestly, this is the best shampoo ever for anybody who has fine hair. It has sea salt. So it's like so exfoliating and lifting on your hair and highly recommend it if anybody has hair like mine, which is pretty fine and on the thinner side. So. Anyway, I switched to the audiobook for Survive the Night and I'm loving it so far. And I'm just loving reading Survive the Night on audiobook on a quick little car trip to the store. But I'm gonna go back and then I'm going to continue reading. tear up and I don't know if it has like this effect on anyone else but the ending was so touching <laughs> oh my god Whew. 
okay so it is I don't even know what time it is I think it's like 1 a.m and I just finished survive the night um and that was a ride so whew, okay I'm not going to go into spoilers in this part because my husband's in the room because we're in the basement of my parents house right now waiting because we have this time where we're waiting to move into our new apartment not important. Anyway, he's here and he hasn't read the book, so I don't want to spoil it. But I wanted to kind of film my non-spoilery reaction as I finished the book right away. Like the second I finished the book, I wanted to jump on here. So, wow, that book was super good. I don't know my final star rating. I think the end, I think, made it a 5 star for me. I was thinking it would be a 4.5 star all the way up until the last twist. And then the last twist was so good. And I honestly did not see it coming. And I don't know if I'm just, like, not good at seeing twists coming. But I, I did not see it coming. So I was really shocked when the final twist happened. And then the very last, like, scene made me cry. And let me tell you, I have never cried reading a book ever. And I mostly read thrillers and horror books, so that makes sense. I cried a little bit in Anxious People, but it was like, not while I was physically reading it, but when I was telling somebody about a certain scene, then I started crying. But I literally started crying. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> my thoughts are all over the place. But I read the first part on my Kindle last night. And then this morning, as soon as the physical book came, I read for a few hours just physically looking at the book. And then the rest of it, kind of the last half of the book, I listened on audiobook and followed along with the physical book. So it was such a fun ride, and I love that I read it in such a short time. It's called Survive the Night, and you know going into it, it takes place over just a short period of time, over a night. So I was really happy to read it in such a short time frame. And I really just had such a good time. I was reading it and was wondering, where is this going to go? Like, how is Riley Sager going to pull this book off? Because for a while it was it was starting to feel, I'm not going to lie, kind of like, no twist is coming. What's happening? And then we hit the first twist. And I really, really liked the first twist. And then we hit the second twist and the final twist got me. Like the first twist was like, oh, oh my gosh, I was not expecting that. But the second twist was like a typical reaction I have to Riley Sager twist. I, I am, my mind is blown. I'm just, yeah. So I think you can really tell that his writing has improved too. This is the most character driven of all his books. You know, you're stuck in a car. And so there has to be a lot of character development because not a ton of action can happen the whole time. It's not like you're changing scenes very much because you're stuck in a car. So there was a lot of character development and that was really fun to read about. So those are my thoughts for tonight. I really loved it. I think I am honestly giving this five stars. I was totally going to give it 4.5 stars all the way up until that last twist and that last twist just got me and the ending was so good. It was so, so, so good. So those are my thoughts for tonight, and Riley Sager has done it again. This is why he's my favorite thriller author. I just absolutely adore his books, and shoot, I don't know how to rate this now. Now I am having trouble knowing where to put this in my official ranking. Mm -hmm.